Welcome back to our online extension of our discussion of RS-2477 and the recent court decision that uh, put several routes. I believe uh, you got uh, all but four miles out of uh, what went into the case, so 89 out of 93 miles is pretty good. Uh, let, let's continue the conversation about preparation and let's, let's talk about the signage issue. We ran into somebody today that had been recently uh, intimidated um, by uh, people from the BLM out here on the field. Now we're, we're going to check into it in a little more detail, but this was after uh, the decision had been made, actually on one of the roads that was already decided and adjudicated, but you were waiting for the scope. And they were told they're not welcome on it and that they were in violation of rules and it was marked as an administrative road only that they were on. And they got challenged and uh, it, it got a little bit heated. Uh, and I'll give you the details on that after and tell you who you need to talk to. Right. <clears throat> but um, the signage does become an issue. Uh, and and uh, it seems to me that moving forward, uh, you got to move on these signs and start moving on reclaiming some of those other roads. Because I think it seems to me if you take too much time to get on it, then part of your cause for controversy starts to slide into limbo, does it not? I mean, that's... Uh, that's assuming that, that you have to litigate all this stuff. But well, that's true. Why, why, why can't we work this stuff out? Well, that'd be, that'd, that'd it, be great. Has, yeah. there, has there been any indication that the agencies want to come back to the table and be a little bit more straightforward about this? You know, Chad, I think that our agencies, when it gets down to a local level, are, are pretty workable. Uh, uh, they're generally our neighbors and friends that we see in the grocery store and uh, uh, work with in a variety of ways in our community. Uh, the biggest issues on this have been at uh, higher levels of the federal government. And uh, in a lot of those agendas to continue to restrict public access into public lands, you used a term earlier that was a transportation route. That's kind of code for, unless this road goes through and goes somewhere uh, to a specific destination, another city, or exits out the other end of the, the agency's land, it doesn't have any validity. So these roads that may have been spur roads or went out to a, a viewpoint or a camping area or a resource area uh, for gravel or something like that, uh, all of those roads are being uh, considered as uh, not necessary and, and, and scheduled to be closed uh, in a variety of ways. And so we, we resist that. Uh, being able to get out here and enjoy the privacy of an area, going out on a road that may go to nowhere other than that beautiful vista or that box canyon, those are things that uh, we stand up for the public's right to have access to. Absolutely. That's the point of access. Yeah. You know, you know, this process, I can think back, started way before the Clinton years, but boy, they ratcheted it up to another degree to where they started embracing preservation values as opposed to multiple use. And so what, what we see here now is a pushback, I think, to bring some balance back into this. And what's going to happen when the federal government has less money to spend on natural resource management? Does this mean we're going to see more signs closed? Well, we've got to work at this like this so the local government can deal with these things and, and, and keep it running and keep it working. Pub public safety is a big part of this, is it not? Yeah. Search and rescue activities, being able to get out there, those are critical needs. It's interesting that you mentioned that, <clears throat> that, that the enforcement agency was trying to intimidate the individual. I suspect that there's a strategy of their sorts for them to try and, and, and uh, make sure that they can get as many signs and as much, as much uh, closure as they, uh, as they can in an attempt to maybe convince the court that we really don't need these roads or something like that. If they can prove that the public have been stopped, maybe they can prove that we don't need them. It's not true. And, uh, and I, I, I think that maybe your case for controversy point was, 
How soon? Is, how soon are you going to start uh, um, retiring the uh, the federal land route system and with Kane County ones? Well, we've always had our own maps with our own sign and road numbering system. In fact, uh, the BLM at one time asked if they could start using our numbering system and at the time we told them no because that was proprietary to our needs. So uh, we've already got some well-established maps, some road numbers and so forth. As far as going out and signing roads and working through that, we haven't really discussed our strategy on that yet, but we will be moving forward with some types of plans there as we uh, outline that and we hope that we will be doing that in cooperation with the agencies. Another thing I think is important to mention is that <clears throat> this is not the end of the road for us. We have some more lit litigation. No pun intended. <laughs> no pun intended. There is other litigation that, that, that we already are engaged in. This was only a 15 road and, uh, and we got what, what you realize we got. We also have two more suits. Uh, one that's uh, been, did, did it get consolidated? There's one that's 69 roads. Yeah. And the one that follows that? And the one that follows that's uh, the monumental roads. The monumental well, suit. 710 roads in that one. So we have just under 800 roads in our county mm -hmm. and across the state of Utah with uh, those other counties that are joining into this, I think there's around... Uh, 15,000 is what the Southern Utah Wilderness Alliance... Is. I think it's even higher than that. Well, it started out at 19,000, but I think that they have done the same thing that we did and take a real good look, and I think that number's come down. You know, Chad, cynically, we're keeping a bunch of lawyers busy. Yeah, and, and, the, and, and the federal government is paying for the litigation on both sides, but <laughs> that's yet a topic for another show. <laughs> Any last comments, gentlemen? Just well, appreciate the opportunity to, to express our point of view and work with you on this. Uh, I would just add for your viewers out there uh, that may have concerns about what's going on in their areas around them that the biggest thing is to not give up on these things, to uh, try to resolve them and move forward with activities. It, I feel strongly that it's a, a right of these local communities to protect the accesses that they've enjoyed for generations. We're the stewards, right? Yep. Well, gentlemen, thank you for joining us you here on the county you. seat. Thank you for staying with us, coming over to our website. If you'd like more information about this topic, uh, if you will check our website, we can link you to some other websites that have some information about uh, county transportation, RS-2477, and land issues in general. And you can find them on our website. Thank you for joining us on this extended version. Remember to tell your friends that we are on every Sunday morning on ABC4 in Salt Lake City and have them tune in. We'll see you next week on the County Seat.